Well, hello, Canadian Campaholic here, coming to you today with a bit of an advice video. Uh, it is early September now, and we are starting to push into the fall camping season. Uh, it's incredible to me how quickly the camping season has uh, raced by. We have a couple of trips planned for September, uh, and then we have two in October, one of which will actually take us into early November. And then sadly, the camping season will come to an end, and it's going to be that long winter hiatus. The topic of today's video, though, is something I've been promising on this channel for a long time, and that is advice on how to back your trailer into a campsite. This advice is going to work regardless of whether you have a pop-up camper or tent trailer, if you have a travel trailer like ours behind me here, or even a fifth wheel. The basic principles still apply. Uh, I'm not going to be doing a, an actual demonstration with the truck and the trailer, but I'm going to use some props to give you uh, some tips and hints on how to make this process easier. Uh, I think for anybody who's new to towing a, a trailer of any kind, backing your trailer into a campsite is probably one of the most unnerving things that you have to face. But with a few uh, easy to understand tips and with some practice, you will easily get very confident with this. I think it's also important to remember that when you go to a state park or a provincial park or really any campsite where there are trailers, People are not going to be looking at you and pointing and laughing if you start to have issues. We've all been there. We've all had challenges. But the important thing is stay calm, follow the tips that I'm going to give you, and eventually it will become second nature. And uh, the tips also apply regardless of the size of trailer. Obviously, if you have something that's a pop-up camper, it's going to be a little easier to maneuver. Uh, if you are dealing with something that's 30, 40 feet, you're going to have to be a little more careful. But again, the basic principles apply. So, let's talk about what those tips are. So one of the first things that we need to consider before we even get into thinking about putting your trailer into the campsite uh, it is positioning, but also the campsite itself and how it's set up. So on um, my dining room table here, um, this rather large space across here uh, is the laneway or the roadway uh, going along the campsites. Um, it's rather wide, uh, but the turning radius on my Lego truck that I'm going to use sucks. So uh, a little bit exaggerated, um, but we've got two campsites. We've got a campsite here. This is the entrance to the campsite. And the barrier or buffer between you and your neighbor is, is dead straight, so you're basically going to be backing in around a 90 degree turn. This, I would say, is, is for me probably an ideal situation, kind of my preferred campsite. Then to the right, we have a campsite where you can see the angle is quite a bit different. So the area where the trailer typically needs to park is, is on a much more of an angle. But before we even get into that, We've got to look at the campsites themselves and it's always important um, if you're going somewhere where there are not pictures of the site to really survey the site first and foremost. So look to see, uh, you know, where are the picnic tables? Uh, where is the fire pit? Uh, you know, are there potentially any trees that may cause an issue for you? In most campsites that we stay at, your real estate is typically to the, if you're looking at the campsite, to the left of the pad where the trailer typically will go. So in most places that we stay at, the trailer would be parked here or it would be parked here and then all your real estate is going to be off to the left. But again, definitely check for obstacles such as picnic tables, fire pits, and trees. And sometimes when they clean up the campsites, they will move the picnic tables. So you may even have to hop out of your vehicle and actually go get someone to help you drag that picnic table out of the way. Because sometimes it's, it ends up being in the, in the pad. Once you've decided uh, where you're going to position the trailer into the campsite, the next big thing to consider is how you're going to approach the campsite. So in this particular case, we're going to use my Lego truck and fifth wheel. Um, unfortunately, it's not very well articulated, and uh, so this is not entirely realistic, but it'll give you a rough idea. Wherever possible, I always, always, always recommend that you approach the campsite on the driver's side. That is, that as you drive down the lane to survey the site, that you approach it from the driver's side. So we'd be driving down the lane, looking out the window. Here in North America, the driver would sit here, looking out the window at the campsite. 
driving along, again, looking out the window at the campsite. It's gonna help you with two things. One, it's gonna help you survey the site more effectively. Secondly, when you start backing into the campsite, as you start to turn the trailer around the corner, you'll notice that you can hang your head out of the side of the vehicle or look out the side of the vehicle and you have a full field of view as to where that trailer is going. It's far easier to judge, do I need to cut it in tighter? Do I need to pull forward a bit? Do I need to correct? Because if you're sitting here in the driver's seat, you have full view of the side of the trailer. It is far more difficult if we come at it from the other direction to back into the campsite as the driver because then you can't really see this part of your trailer whatsoever so you don't really know what's going on in the back corner. You do start to see the ass end of the trailer, sorry, the back end of the trailer, pardon me, as you're backing up but only once it gets past a certain angle. So it's not you should never back in with it turning towards the passenger side. I just recommend you avoid it wherever possible. But as you're going to see in our two scenarios here, um, there are some situations where you're going to have no choice but to back in on the passenger side. The next point that I'm going to make is that when you approach your campsite, always not only try to approach it on the driver's side if you can, but keep your vehicle as close to the campsite as possible. So if this was our campsite right here, we would want to approach it as far to the side of the lane that's close to the campsite as possible. The reason being is, if these are all trees down here, and this is the other side of the lane, if we come in too far out, and we go past the campsite and start to back in, this is an exaggeration, but you very quickly run out of space. As you're swinging the nose of the vehicle to chase the trailer in, you're gonna start actually possibly hitting trees and bushes and getting all caught up on the other side of the lane. So again, uh, regardless of what side your campsite's on, always try to bring the trailer and the vehicle as close to the campsite as possible. That way, when you go past the campsite, and you start to bring the trailer around and you're cranking it in and cranking it in and then you start to chase the trailer in with your vehicle, you'll notice now I've got a lot more space at the front. I've got a lot more clearance and the nose of the vehicle is not gonna hit anything. It's also important that when you get to this kind of point backing in, that you do look out the front again. Sometimes when you're backing into a campsite, you get so obsessed with what the back of the trailer is doing that as you start to get to that critical point where you're backing in and you start to swing around, you may forget to look at what's going on um, on the nose of the truck. So again, stay as close to the campsite uh, as you physically can when you come down the lane. If you're approaching it from the other direction, same thing. Stay to the side of the campsite as much as possible. So again, when you start backing into the site and you're swinging the vehicle around, you don't accidentally run into anything at the front. So you're going camping, you're all excited. You're going into site 97, your favorite campsite. You found it on the map, you've driven along, you've had a quick look into the site, the site is completely empty, there's no obstacles. You're going to pull past the site, again on the driver's side, like we said. You are towards the campsite, not all the way over to the opposite side, like we said, so you've got lots of room to swing. At this point, you want to drive the vehicle so that the back end of the trailer is just past the entrance of the site. If you misjudge this and you still have a big part of your bum of the trailer, and this doesn't matter if it's a pop-up or a tent trailer or a travel trailer, fifth wheel, all the same thing. If too much of the butt of the trailer is in the entrance, when you start to cut that trailer in, you can already see we have a problem especially if you have trees and obstacles over here. So if we have um, you know, a huge oak tree right here and then another pine tree here, if you don't give yourself enough space and you, you, start, you, you go past the campsite, you get to about here and then you start cutting in, it's gonna be very hard to achieve it. So again, let's reset the scenario. We drive past the campsite and we bring the back end of the trailer just past the entrance of the site. It's at this stage that things can start to go terribly wrong. And the reason for that is 
when you are reversing a trailer, turning the steering wheel starts to become very confusing. So to help illustrate what we need to do here, I have a uh, steering wheel from my son's uh, Nintendo Wii. Oh, try not to bump the camera there. So if you're sitting there in your vehicle looking at your steering wheel, you know that in our scenario, the campsite is to our left. We followed Dan's advice and we've kept the campsite to our left. We want the trailer to go to the left. There's a lot of ways where people will say, well, turn opposite to what you think you should turn and so on and so forth. But the tip that I was given that helps me, because remember when you're in these situations, you could be stressed out. Uh, you could be a little frazzled. Your kids could be loud. You might feel like people are watching you. But remember, I said, typically they're not making fun of you. So don't be paranoid. What I think of is I look at the bottom part of the steering wheel and I turn the steering wheel so that the bottom part moves towards the direction I want the trailer to go. So let me give you an example. If I'm sitting outside the campsite and I want my trailer to go to the left, the driver's side, I'm gonna turn the wheel so that the bottom of the wheel is moving towards the left. On the flip side of that, if I want my trailer to go to the right, the passenger side, I'm going to turn this wheel so the bottom goes towards the passenger side. You can start thinking about, we'll turn it opposite from the top, and, and there's a million and one other ways to do it. But I find personally, when I'm in that slightly stressful moment, when I focus on the bottom of my steering wheel, and I know turn it towards the direction I want the trailer to go. Well, why is that? Why are you turning it the opposite way that you would think? Well, think of it this way. If you were incredibly strong and you could literally grab the tongue or the, the hitch of your trailer and push it in a certain direction, if you want the back of the trailer to go this way, you're gonna try and push the nose of the trailer in the opposite direction. Notice that? So notice as the nose of the trailer swings to the left, what way is the ass swinging? It's swinging to the right. As the nose of the trailer swings to the right, which way is the ass swinging? To the left, pardon my language. And that's why the wheel direction is always reversed when you start the turn. So again, if I want the butt of the trailer, the rear end to go to the left, the nose is gonna have to swing to the right. If I want it to swing to the right, then the nose is technically gonna have to swing to the left. That's where the pressure is pushing it. That's why when you have the truck in place and you want the trailer, let's hook it up. Whoops. Let's hook it up. Again, we're in position. We want the trailer to go to the right. We are actually going to turn the wheels in the opposite direction. Again, if this is our steering wheel, we are going to turn the bottom of the wheel. I don't know if you guys can see this. Here's the bottom. We're gonna turn it to the direction we want the trailer to go. We want it to go over here. So as we turn it to the direction we want it to go, the wheels on the truck are going to pivot in that direction and allow the truck to push the nose around in the opposite way. Now, if that doesn't make sense and that's really confusing, don't worry about all this geometry stuff and where you're pushing the trailer. Just simplify it for yourself. When you're in position, look down at your steering wheel and again, focus on the bottom of the steering wheel and turn it in the direction that you want the trailer to go. Another safety consideration to take into account, of course, uh, would be if possible, get a backup camera on the back of your trailer. The problem with a backup camera is it can give you a, a false sense of safety and security. Uh, wherever possible, you should always try to have a spotter, someone who can physically uh, stand outside of the vehicle to give you some guidance. So again, if this is our campsite right here, and we drive along with our truck and we're in position to start backing in, typically what will happen for us is my wife will hop out of the truck. She will first come and stand right about here. That way she can watch the back of the truck as it's going into the site. She can also keep an eye out for the opposite lane to make sure that I don't accidentally, or the opposite side rather, to make sure I don't accidentally start scraping. The other thing that uh, you can do is make sure that your spotter uh, has a walkie-talkie perhaps 
You can buy yourself walkie-talkies so that you can talk to each other. Uh, if you don't want to spend that kind of money, then if you've got a cell phone and your spotter has a cell phone, call each other, put yourselves on speakerphone or use your hands free and communicate that way. You could be really old fashioned about it and do hand signals. Make sure that you talk to each other first about what those hand signals are going to be. Establish the hand signals and agree upon them. And then there's always the good old fashioned open the windows on the truck and uh, yell at each other, which <laughs> seems to work very well. The key thing is when the spotter's standing here and you start to back the truck in, or the trailer in rather, and you start to get to this critical piece, again, you can see this side of the trailer. You can't really see much of what's going on over here, so that's going to be critical for them. I then recommend that you pause and give your spotter a chance to walk further into the campsite, again, staying at a safe distance, so that they can look at the back of the campsite and the back of the trailer and start to give you guidance so that as you're finally getting it into position, they can see what's going on and give you feedback. My one top tip for this part, and my wife and I struggle with this, make sure that when the spotter is standing there giving you advice, it's ongoing feedback. Okay, keep coming back, keep coming back. So let me give you an example. So I'm just gonna, uh, Put my spotter over here she's laying down on the job so first of all she's here in the lane and we go past the campsite and we start backing it in we start cranking it in we're cranking it in i realize i'm i'm hitting things here but the cornering on this lego thing is is crap but you get the point so we're cranking it in and we're cranking it in she says okay keep coming keep coming keep coming and at this point i can see where the ass end of the trailer is so i know i'm almost on the angle i want it to be on and then I start to bring the vehicle around. At this point, we would pause. My wife would then move to the back of the campsite and stand there. And again, I would then continue to back up and she'd say, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Okay, almost there, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, and stop. When I, say, when I hear her say, and, I know the next word she's gonna say is stop. What you don't wanna have happen, and this used to happen to us in the early days of trailering or RVing, I would start bringing the trailer back into the campsite and I would get, okay, keep going. Okay, you're fine. And then I would start yelling, am I all right? Can, I, can you see what's going on? And she'd say, yeah, you're fine. And then I keep going back. Nothing again, no feedback, nothing. And then all of a sudden, stop! Because you've almost hit a tree. That is not gonna work. There needs to be, if it's gonna be verbal, there needs to be constant, constant cues. Okay, keep coming around. Okay, turn it more, you're good, you're good, keep coming back, something to that effect. Lots of feedback for the driver. Because when you're in the driver's seat, it can be a little daunting and your spotter needs to give you constant information. So now that we've covered positioning the vehicle, we've covered um, getting set up and getting started, let's talk about turning the wheel and how we actually physically are gonna get this trailer into the site. So once we're past our campsite, we've studied the wheel. We know which way we want the wheel to go. We've turned it a little bit to crank those wheels. And again, I'm sorry I can't fully demo that. These wheels are not articulated. It's a Lego set for crying out loud. Then you can slowly start to reverse. And, and I emphasize slowly. If you go fast, you could jackknife the trailer and damage it. Uh, you could plow into something or someone the spotter, another camper, who knows what. So take your time, go slow. So in this case, we've started to crank the wheel in the direct, the bottom of the wheel rather, in the direction that we want the trailer to go. So we want it to go to our left. We're sitting right here in the driver's seat. So we're gonna crank the wheel to the left. This is the bottom of the wheel. I've got it in line with the, uh, the truck. So bottom of the wheel to the left. And you don't have to crank it hard over. You can give it a little bit of a turn, a quarter turn, a half turn, whatever you need it to do, and then very slowly start to reverse. And what's gonna happen is, the truck is gonna start to turn, and then the trailer is gonna start to go into the campsite. If you want it to um, go around the corner more sharply, then crank that wheel even harder than you were before. Again, so the bottom of the wheel is moving towards the direction you want the truck to go. What it's gonna provide is your angle of attack. Now be careful you don't overdo it because watch what happens. Boom, 
we've now jackknifed, we've damaged the truck, we've damaged the trailer. That's a classic mistake. We don't want to do that. Again, we want to start reversing. We want to get the angle to where we kind of like it. And at this point, folks, what you're going to do is stop for a second and crank that wheel in the complete opposite direction. So as we were approaching the site, we turned the bottom of the wheel towards the campsite, kind of like that. And we got our angle that we see here. Once the trailer's pretty much starting to head in the direction we want, we're then going to crank that wheel almost all the way over in the opposite direction. And what that's going to create is what's called the chase. And that's when the vehicle will actually now chase and follow the trailer and get it into position. Now this is where some people start to panic and they get a little bit unstuck. Now in this case, I've, <laughs> I've actually cut it a little too tight. So let me correct this here a little bit. We're going to come a little bit further past the site. We're going to crank that wheel, get the approach angle that we want. Now we're going to begin the trace and I've got the chase rather. I got to drag the truck around because again, it doesn't, it's not fully articulated. You'll notice that everything starts to come in line. The truck is now actually in line with the trailer. At this point, people will panic and go, oh my God, I'm not as far over as I want to be, or I'm not happy with where the trailer is. Not a problem. You simply, in this case, pull forward, and then once again, turn the bottom of the steering wheel towards the direction that we want the trailer to go. So if we want it to go to the driver's side, we're going to start cranking the bottom of the wheel to the driver's side. And that once again creates an angle, gets that trailer where it wants to be, and we can chase it in. And it doesn't matter if you got to shunt back and forth a couple of times, it's okay. Also guys, I mean, unless there's a major slope and a major problem with where you're parking it, you don't have to agonize about having the trailer as far over as possible. A lot of people obsess over that because they want as much real estate on the entry door side as possible. But really, um, it, it's not critical as long as you're not like, you know, miles out and you're hanging out in the middle of the site and you've got this huge gap, you, you don't have to obsess. Just kind of get it where you need it to be. So let's go through that maneuver one more time. We're going to drive past the campsite. We're going to allow the back end of the trailer to just pass the site. Once we're in position, we're going to visualize where we want the trailer to go and we're going to turn the bottom of the wheel in the direction that we want the trailer to turn. So in this case, we're going to crank the bottom like this and it's going to start to turn the trailer. The other th tip that I would give you at this point is if you're wondering where the trailer is going to go, watch the wheels. Don't watch the back of the trailer. Watch the wheels. The wheels will dictate the arc that the trailer is going to take. And again, once you get it in the angle that you like, start turning the wheel the other way and chase it in. If at this point you're not happy and you're like, uh-oh, you know, we're not going far enough, not a problem. Stop for a second, crank it back like you did at the beginning to bring that angle, make it even sharper. Pause for a second, turn the wheel the opposite way to chase it in. Now, one recommendation I can give is if this is a little daunting, go to a parking lot somewhere. Uh, after hours at a mall when a mall is closed um, or, or just a large open space somewhere. Set up some cones. Practice this. Once you do it a few times, you'll realize it's really not too, too difficult. Let's take a look at our friend on the right here. This campsite, as you can see, is a little bit different. I'm just going to adjust the camera here for a second. This campsite has quite the angle. This is a mistake I often make when I go into campsites because again I follow that rule of always approach on the driver's side so you come down the lane you follow Dan's advice you're staying as close to the campsite as possible you pass the campsite and you think okay I'm gonna study my wheel I'm gonna crank the bottom of my wheel in the direction I want the trailer to go and you start cranking it around and you crank it and you crank it and you crank it and then you start chasing it and you start chasing it and you start chasing it and then you crank it and crank it and a lot of times you're going to run out of road you're going to be jackknifing like crazy it is very very difficult to get the trailer on an angle like that when you're approaching it on the driver's side in this case it's going to be a lot easier if you actually kind of break dan's rule a little bit and pass the campsite on the passenger side. Because in this case, what's gonna happen is you're gonna be able to back that trailer with a much more shallow angle. 
So in this case, we want the trailer to go into the left. So we're going to move the bottom of the wheel to the left and it's going to start to bring the trailer into the site like this. The key is don't over crank it. I've done that before. I've gone like this and then the trailer ends up, you know, in the middle of the site and I've got too much space. So again, pull past, get the butt of the trailer just past where you want it to start to be and a very subtle angle, bring it into the site, start the chase a lot sooner and very, very slowly maneuver it into the site like that. Nice and smooth. Now, again, if you're not happy with where the trailer's positioned, not a problem. Pull the truck as far to the right as you can, keeping in mind that you're going to need to straighten her up a little bit and then crank her over and bring her back. But typically I find when I do this, you notice I'm almost where I was a minute ago. That happens in real life too. You do this Austin Powers back and forth shuffle and the trailer still kind of ends up where you had it in the first place. But yes, if you go past the campsite and you notice that the pad or the area where the trailer is meant to be um, has quite an angle like this, then yeah, you are much better to pass the campsite on the passenger side and very carefully reverse it in with a very shallow angle. The key with this one is spotter, spotter, spotter. You absolutely need the spotter to be here. Um, and what we do, our favorite campsite um, at the Pinery is like this. The angle is just too sharp. So what we do, and it's, there's a very, um, very narrow opening as well to get into the site. So what I typically do is I pull past the site, I hug the side as close as possible, I get the rear end of the trailer just past the site. My wife will stand over here. And what we're doing at this point, we're not trying to get it in the site in one shot. That's the other thing. You're not a hero. You're not, a, you're not necessarily a big rig driver. You don't get a prize for getting it in in one shot. Take your time. If it makes, takes three, four, five attempts, it doesn't matter. You don't want to bash up your rig. So she'll stand here outside the campsite and I will start swinging the, 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 tra the trailer into position. And then once I've almost got it at the angle I like, she'll say, okay, stop there. And then at that point, what I'll do is I'll actually bring the truck around in the other direction a little bit. And again, I will start to position it where I want it to be. And she'll say, stop. And at this point, what she does is she'll walk around the front of the vehicle or she'll walk around the back of the vehicle and position herself in the campsite so that she can then focus on positioning within the site. We already know we're good here. I need to make sure I'm good over here and back here. So if she stands a safe distance within the campsite, she can see all the way over to here and all the way over to there. Plus the fact when we reach this kind of an angle, I've got my side view mirror and my towing mirrors. I can see kind of where the trailer is going. I can see where the back end is going and the wheels and I can start to follow it. But again, on our trailer, we do not have a, a backup camera. So I need my spotter, in this case, my wife, to stand there and judge where the trailer in is as I, as I reverse it. The last tip I will give you is uh, an acronym called GOAL. And I know a lot of professional transport or big rig drivers that will follow this rule. If you're coming into the campsite and you're in a position and you start backing up and you and your spotter are having communication problems or maybe, you know, uh, heaven forbid, you're on your own trying to do this by yourself and you're not sure what's going on and you're sitting in the seat and you're trying to remember which way Dan said to turn the wheel and the trailer is all over the place and you're worried about hitting stuff. Get out and look goal. Get out and look. Get out of the truck, walk around the back, look at where the trailer's positioned, go around the full side, look where the trailer's positioned, look at where your truck's positioned, uh, and then when you're ready, get back in and continue the maneuver. And if you get to this point and you're not sure, am I far back enough? Am I far back enough? Again, get out and look. Have a look around. Again, as I said at the beginning of the video, I have, I mean, we've been camping and, and backing up trailers of various types for, oh God, over seven years now, I have never, ever, ever had a fellow camper or a person in their vehicle get out and say, hurry the hell up, you idiot. What the hell are you doing? You're blocking the road. Never had it happen. Uh, because 
We're all in this together. We're all campers. Uh, anybody that tows a trailer knows exactly what you're going through. And if you need a couple of minutes to get out and position things, people are going to be patient. If you're there for hours and agonizing over it, okay, that's different. But in this case, if you need just a couple of moments to get out and look, that is much better than crashing your camper into a tree, smacking your truck into something, or worse, hitting someone and causing damage. So that, I think, is an absolute top tip. So that about sums up my uh, advice video for backing your trailer into a campsite. Um, obviously, if you're dealing with a pop-up camper, which is smaller, um, you're not going to need as much room to maneuver. Uh, if you're dealing with a twin axle trailer, it's going to be a little bit easier to back into a site. Single axle trailers will start to pivot and move ever so slightly if you hit a, a, a bump or a divot. Um, and fifth wheels, of course, the geometry is just a little bit, um, a little bit different. So there are some subtle nuances that we're not going to get into in this video. But the general tips I've given you today with my crude demonstration really were the key things that were explained to me uh, that made me much more confident in backing into a campsite. And uh, we take, like I said, probably 14 trips a year every year, a variety of different uh, campsites and angles and setups. And I have yet um, to have a situation where I can't back into the site. The one thing you do have to be careful of, though, is making sure that the unit you're towing really will fit into the site. Uh, in Ontario parks, when you book, they tell you what size campers will fit onto the site, and you really want to be respectful of their uh, estimates. It's not just about the length of the site itself. The site could be 50 feet long, but they will also take into consideration the access roads to the site. They will take into consideration obstacles, and while you might technically be able to squeeze that, you know, 32 foot trailer into that site because you got 50 feet, you might find that you are actually running out of space in the lane to actually maneuver. And I have seen on occasion where someone will completely disregard the requirements. They'll try to squeeze a 30 foot trailer into a site that's only rated up to about 18 feet and they nearly take down trees and bushes trying to get it into the site. So just be mindful of that. But if that's all good, with some time and patience and a good spotter and these tips, you will feel much better about backing into a campsite. Uh, so practice will make uh, almost perfect. With that, I hope that you're enjoying the rest of the 2019 camping season. We'll talk to you later.